Straight all day. Pat yourself on the back for tuning in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to occur. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is that go-getter energy that moves you to make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, you get the mindset, the method, the podcast known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Welcome to the show. Today's topic So, what about when you're dealing with a problem individual? Whether that's a problem child, a problem parent, a problem coach, boss, coworker, next door neighbor, uh, manager, a jerk at the register at the local convenience store when you're dealing with another person who seems to be giving you issues maybe they just have it out for you maybe they're just a, a bitch or an asshole and they just want to they just seem to want to give you a hard time nobody else but just you or maybe they're giving everybody a hard time and you happen to be next in line i want to tell you something today here's the topic the problem is never the other person the problem is always 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 the problem is always you that's the topic here today I'm going to explain exactly what that means. Of course, I'm going to explain exactly what it means. I had an athlete who told me a story of how a coach, he was in practice, and the coach yelled at the player because the player missed the layup in practice. And from what the player explained to me, that the coach yelling at him was kind of a, it was a patented overreaction. I've seen a lot of coaches overreact. To things and practices and games. I told you several, several episodes ago how I went to a college basketball game and I saw the coach from Georgia Tech's basketball team screaming out of his mind like it was almost like a it was almost like he was acting the way he was screaming so loud and so hard at his team the entire game. I've seen coaches overreact that way at every sport at every level. Okay, so this is probably a coach overreaction from the story this athlete was telling me. Coach yelled at him for missing a layup, threatened him, told him, I'm going to kick you off the team if you miss another layup. And maybe this is just the way that that coach learned to, quote unquote, motivate players by screaming at them like that, which is completely incorrect. And I talked about this in our episode on what we want from our coaches, bosses, and leaders back in January. So go look that up at dreallday.com slash podcast. But that's not even an issue. The issue here today is not about the coach because the coach isn't the person who came to me with an issue. The person who came to me with an issue is the player. The player asked, is it something wrong with the coach for yelling at me like that and overreacting like that because I missed a layup in practice? Or, you know, is it something wrong with me? Because the player said after the coach yelled at him like that and kind of put him out there in front of the whole team, said, I'm going to kick you off the team if you miss another layup. The player felt kind of embarrassed. The player felt I would I I can understand that. Player felt kind of embarrassed, said it kind of wrecked my confidence. I haven't gotten my confidence back ever since that happened and the player was asking me whose fault is it is it my fault for missing a layup and allowing this to wreck my confidence or is it the coach's fault for yelling at me like this is I, I believe the player was trying to figure out you know if the player was kind of asking me Dre am I being mentally weak for allowing my confidence to get wrecked like this or am I can I give myself a free pass for having my confidence wrecked because I have an asshole jerk coach who doesn't know what the hell he's doing so whose fault is it Dre is it the coach's fault or is it my fault you know what I said to that player I think you can probably tell if you listen to this show enough you know what I said to this player if you heard me say tell you what the topic of today's episode is you should be able to understand what I said to this player and I'll tell you anyway I said the problem is you player the problem is you the one who missed the layup the one whose confidence got wrecked because his coach yelled at him you are the problem it is always you and today, I'm not talking to the player today. I'm talking to you today, listener. It is always you, the pro- you are always the problem, no matter what happens. Something goes wrong in your life that is an interpersonal issue. The problem is always you. And today, we're going to get into exactly why that is. Point number one. The topic, again, is the problem is never the other person. It is always you. Let me get something clear here. Right off the top. This is point one. As I said, already in the introduction here, I think... That the coach in this story probably went too far. Screaming at a player for missing a layup. Now, I don't know the context. Maybe this player misses layups all the time. Maybe this player just shows that he's not really taking the game seriously. Maybe this player was lollygagging through practice and not paying attention. Maybe this player just blew a layup in the last game that cost the team a chance to make the playoffs. Who knows the context behind the coach yelling and screaming at the player and saying to him, if you miss another layup, I'm going to kick you off the team. But it just sounds to me, just through the contextual clues that I got in this brief story 
from this athlete who I don't know, it seems like the coach overreacted. It seems like the coach went a little bit too far with the, I get yelling at your player for missing a layup, but saying to him, if you miss another layup, I'm going to kick you off the team. I don't think the coach is actually going to do that. I think the coach is maybe on edge, maybe angry, maybe just wanted to get the player's attention. Maybe he's trying to get another player's attention by yelling at, he's trying to get player B's attention by yelling at player A. I know some coaches who will play that game. So I'm going to get clear off the top that the coach probably went too far in this situation. But I want you to understand that what we're talking about here today is a central foundational principle of the entire work on your game philosophy is that we do not blame other people for our problems. Let me say that one more time. A central tenet of the work on your game philosophy is that we do not blame other people for our problems. This player was in a bad mental state because of the coach. The player's problem was my confidence is wrecked. I don't feel good about myself on the basketball court. I play tentatively now in front of my coach because of what he just said to me. If I miss another layup, I'm going to get kicked off the team. I completely understand all that. And it sounds like this coach is kind of a jerk, kind of an idiot, kind of doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe. Now, we don't know all the context. Maybe the, the player told this story, leaving out the details that put any responsibility on him. And he did. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe the coach really is a jerk. Let's just assume that that's true. Okay. We're just going to assume that that's true. But we don't blame other people for our problems. The player was in a bad mental state because of the coach. It is your fault, player, for allowing the yelling of your coach to mess up your confidence. You got that? If you have an a irrational boss, irrational parent, irrational team captain, irrational supervisor, irrational anybody with a position of authority over you, and they say something to you that messes you up mentally, gets you in a really bad state mentally, it is your fault for allowing that statement to bother you. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. I want to make sure I'm making it clear. That's, that's the issue that we're going to deal with here today. If the coach had come to me, let's say, let's flip the tables. Let's say I got an email from the coach. Let's say the same coach in this situation sent me an email and said, Dre, listen, I listened to the Work On Your Game podcast. It's amazing. It's the best podcast in the world. So I want to ask you a question because I think you can give me a good answer. I, I can see this happening, right? So the coach comes to me and he says, Dre, I yelled at one of my players. I screamed at him in front of the whole team because he messed up and he missed the layup. And I told him if he misses another layup, I'm going to kick him off the team. Now it seems like... I've completely destroyed him mentally. He has no confidence. He plays very tentatively. I see, it seems like I completely destroyed him or he's completely destroyed as a result of what I said to him, Dre. You know, is it, so could you help me out, Dre? Is it his fault for being so mentally weak that me saying that bothered him? Or is it my fault as the coach for yelling at him? You know what I would say to the coach? I would say, coach, it's your fault for overreacting like that. So right now, you just heard me completely contradict myself. And I want to make sure I'm pointing it out. If the player came to me and said, the coach yelled at me and it messed me up, whose fault is it? I say, player, it's your fault for allowing that to mess you up. If the coach came to me and said, Dre, I yelled at one of my players, now he's completely mentally wrecked and I can't even use him as a player anymore, whose fault is it? I would say, coach, it's your fault for doing that. So what's the point of this? What's the moral to this hypothetical situation that I'm saying? Whomever has the problem is the problem. Shall I say that one more time? Just in case you weren't, you weren't really listening. You were listening, but you weren't really listening. Let me say it again. Whomever has the problem is the problem. No matter how crazy or dumb or incompetent your teammates or counterparts or your associates or your bosses or your subordinates are, as soon as you see it as an issue, you are now responsible for fixing it, period. And if you don't fix it, if you allow it to continue and is messing you up in any way, shape or form, and you're recognizing that as an issue, then you're the issue because your inability or unwillingness to address it is what is allowing and causing the problem to continue. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Point number two, today's topic is the, never per the other person is never the problem. The problem is always you. Understand that this show that you're listening to, in case you didn't know, this is personal development, self-evaluation personal growth. That's what we talk about here a thousand days in a damn row. Thusly, we look at everything that everything that gets discussed here, we look at through the lens of, here's the quote, what can I do to improve this situation for myself? That's a, that's a quote that you need to take with you from today's episode. Any issue that you're dealing with, even when you're dealing with a completely incompetent, irrational person who just seems to just try to do whatever they can to make life hell just for you. Even if they really are doing it, I'm not even trying to be sarcastic here. 
Let's say that there's someone who just seems to want to just mess you up for whatever reason. Your thought process needs to be, what can I do to improve this situation for myself? Not what can they do, not who's right or wrong. What can I do? What did we talk about in yesterday's episode? Don't think your way out of action. It's the things that you do that are going to produce the results in your life, not the things that you think about. So even if we see all the improvement of the situation needing to come from someone or something else, for example, if you're on a, a sports team and you're the best player on the team by far and everybody else on the team is completely garbage, they don't take the game seriously, they don't even show up to practice on time, they don't play hard, and y'all keep losing every game, getting the, the shit kicked out of y'all every game, even though you're playing hard and playing great and everybody can see you're a star, but the rest of your teammates are just a bunch of jerk-offs, it's your fault. Even if they're the ones who need to make all the improvements, it's your fault that the situation exists because here's the plain truth. They might not change. They might not improve. So now what you going to do? I mean, you're still on that team. I mean, aside from not being on that team, you're stuck with those guys. What are you going to do? If you're stuck with that coach who's yelling at you all the time, what are you going to do? If you're stuck with these players who every time you yell at them, they just fall apart mentally, but the only way you know how to coach is to yell at players, what are you going to do? Just keep losing? What are you going to do? Just keep destroying every player who comes to your program and never win another game? What are you going to do? Not what are they going to do. Not what they need to do. Not, what, not whose fault is it. What are you going to do? See, all of these things that we talk about here, personal development, self-evaluation, self-growth, these are solo endeavors. Getting better is a solo endeavor. Personal development is a solo endeavor. Self-evaluation is a solo endeavor. That's not for anybody else to point it out for you. I'm guiding you here. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm guiding. I'm going to give you the tools. You got to do the work. I can hand you a hammer and nails and some wood, and you got to build the house. Are there, now, just to make sure we're being clear here, are there some stupid, incompetent, useless people out there? Yes, and maybe some of them are in your family. Maybe some of them are on your team. Maybe some of them work for you. Maybe you work for a few of them. Our job is to figure out not who they are, but to figure out how to work with them or get rid of them. That's our job. Because notice both of those things I said, work is an action, action verb. Get rid, action phrase, doing things. Not thinking about, not blaming, not pointing fingers. What are we gonna do about this situation? What can I do to improve this situation for myself? That is your phrase embedded into your brain. Point number three. Today's topic is every problem that you have is never the other person's issue. It is always you. You are always the problem with every problem you have. Point number three, I want you to assume that every person that you're dealing with, every person you come across, even the assholes and the jerks and the, com the imbeciles, the complete, total idiots, assume that every single one of them is doing the best that they can possibly do with the resources at their disposal and assume that they will never change. I'm going to let that one sink in. I'm going to say it again. Just to make sure it sinks in. Because I want to put you in the right mental state here. See, this is not, I don't want to just give you a whole bunch of words that go in one ear and out the other and sound good for the 20 minutes you listen to this, then you completely forget it and go back to doing the same shit you were doing before you heard this. I want you to assume that every person you deal with, listen closely, every single one of them, assume they're doing the best that they can do with the resources at their disposal as they are right now. Assume that that's, this is the best you're going to get out of them. As they are now, they're not getting any better. They're not improving. They don't want to listen to a podcast called Work On Your Game. They're not into this self-evaluation shit. They're not into none of this. They're just going to be who they are, and they're not changing at all, and you're stuck with them. Assume that that's true. And some of you, that actually is true. Assume that they're never changing at all. They're just who they are right now. You got two choices. Here they are. Choice A, get away from them as they're completely impossible individuals, separate yourself from that person, that situation, that job, that team, that coach, those players. Do that if you can. That's option A. And neither one of these is better than the other. I'm just gonna give you both options. You do what you're gonna do with it. Option A is get away from them. Option B, figure out how you can win anyway, either leveraging what you can get from those people despite their presence, or how you can make it work for you. How you can kind of coach around what they're doing, how you can act around their activity, how you can leverage whatever you can get out of them and make it work for you. Those are your two choices. You ain't got no other choices. And this is what leaders do, people. Understand that the best leaders are not necessarily people with all the best players on their team or the best bosses at their jobs or the best employees at their companies. They're the people who look at the tools that they have and they use what they've got to get what they want. 
They use what they've got. And it might not be as much as the next person has or the next person or what they hoped to have or what they would have in an ideal situation. Most of us don't live ideal situation lives. I don't know, how many of you got an ideal situation in your life right now? Maybe, I don't think many of us. All right? We all got some things like, damn, this could be a little bit better. You know, that could be a little bit better. You know, we could change this right here. There's always some, some little thing or some big things that could be better, but they probably ain't changing. Why? Because they involve other people and other people aren't as keen on making these changes to please you as you are making the changes to please you. And you, can't all, you don't always have the power to make the changes yourself, right? You might have a couple teammates who are just, just bums and don't take the game seriously and don't play hard and don't really want to compete, but you stuck with them on the team for the next 50 games. What are you going to do? Are you going to win some games, figure out how to use them and win some games, or are you going to lose all, game, all season and then blame your teammates? What are you going to do? This is not a rhetorical question. This is what leaders do. We figure it out. If you coach a sports team and your team stinks because your players are not really that good, you could argue that your players suck and that your players underperform and nobody practices hard and nobody's serious about the game. And you could be 1,000% correct. You could be right. And you could tell the media how right you are the day that they fire your ass because the team keeps losing. You could do that. You'd be right. You're completely right. Nobody's going to argue with you. People are going to say, you know what? Your team was garbage. You know what? Those players did underperform. You know, you didn't have much talent on this roster, but you know what? You're unemployed right now. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shrugging my shoulders right now. You can't see me. I mean, okay. Yeah, you're right, but you're also unemployed. You also just got fired. You also got that on you. You also have a 2-27 and season on your resume. Okay. You can blame the players if you want to, but that's, on, that's your resume. That's not theirs. In other words, pointing out the mistakes of the other person or the other people or the situation or whatever you've been blaming up until this point, whatever you've been thinking about blaming up until this point, pointing out those errors of those people, even though you're correct, does not absolve you of responsibility, period. And if you're a leader, then you completely understand what I'm saying here. And if you plan on becoming a leader, then you need to download this episode and keep listening to it until you understand what I'm saying here. Let's recap today's topic, which is the problem is never the other person. The problem is always you. Every problem you have that deals with another person, you're the problem. Athlete told me that a coach yelled at him, destroyed his mindset. Coach told him, if you miss another layup, I'm going to kick you off the team. It completely wrecked him mentally. I understand that. And from what he said, this was just an overreaction by the coach because the player seemed to be a, a, at least a good enough player that the coach didn't have to say nothing like that to him. And what coach is going to kick a player off the team for missing a layup in prayer? I never heard of that. Never seen it happen. I don't think this coach is actually going to do it. But he said it and the player took it to heart. So the player asked me, hey, I'm wrecked mentally right now. Whose fault was it? Is it my fault for being mentally weak or is it his fault for yelling at me? I said, it's your fault because you're the one who got the problem. Point number one, we're getting something clear here. I think the coach went too far. I said that. This is central principle of work on your game, though. We don't blame other people for our problems. The player was the one in bad mental state. He was the one who had a problem. He emailed me because he had a problem. So he's the problem. Now, if the coach had emailed me and said, you know what? One of my players, I think I lost him mentally because I yelled at him. Is it my fault? I say, hell yeah, it's your fault because you're the one who did it. You're the one who has the problem. Whoever has the problem is the problem. Always. No matter how crazy or dumb or incompetent the other person or other people were, it is your responsibility for fixing that situation. If you didn't fix it and it's become a problem that you can't solve, then you're the issue. So you need to look in the mirror, not at them. Point number two, this show here is personal development, self-evaluation, self-growth. Thus, we look at everything through the lens of a simple question. Here it is. Write it down if you don't have it. What can I do to improve this situation for myself? Even if we see all the improvement needing to come from someone or something else, we still put it on ourselves because that's what a leader does. The reason why we don't put it on other people or other places or things to improve, even though their improvement would help the situation, the reason why we don't put the onus on them to improve because they might not improve. Now, everybody don't want to listen to a podcast that starts with the word work all right, because that's already giving them an idea that this is going to take some action. This, is not, this ain't no entertainment podcast. This ain't to just sit back and laugh about bullshit podcast. This, is a, this podcast is going to give you some directives, some things you actually need to do, and not everybody wants to do the work. I don't know if you I don't know if somebody told you that. I don't I think you probably know that. If you listen to enough episodes of this show, you know the type of people who will listen to something like this, and you also know the type of people who wouldn't. True or not. Alright, so everybody ain't trying to hear this shit. And this ain't for everybody. I don't make this for everybody. Us as in the leadership position, you do not sit and wait for other people to improve because they just might not improve. They might just stay exactly as they are. They might go backwards and you stuck with them. So what you gonna do? It's a solo endeavor to get better in life. 
Getting better, improving, personal development, self-evaluation is a solo job. It is not a team sport. Our job is to figure out how to work with the stupid, incompetent, and useless people out there because there's so many of them, you're bound to run into a few. All right, so either you figure out how to work with them or you get rid of them. Those are the only options you got. Point number three, assume that every person that you deal with is doing the best that they can possibly do with the resources that they have as they are, and they will never change. Assume that. Now, you got two choices. A, get rid of, get rid of them or get away from them as quickly as possible because they're impossible individuals, or B, figure out how you can win anyway, leveraging what you can from them despite their presence. And that's what leaders do. If you want to be a leader, you sometimes got to make something out of nothing. You got to turn shit to sugar. Opportunism. Chapter 3, Robert Greene and 50 Cent, a book called The 50th Law. If you haven't read it, go get it. You should have read it because I mentioned it in my favorite books episode, episode number 60. This is what leaders do. If you coach a sports team and the team stinks, you can say all the players are terrible and nobody worked hard and nobody showed up to practice and you didn't have the right resources and your budget for recruiting wasn't large enough. You would be 100% correct, but you'd still be out of a job. You'd still be fired and you still have that on your resume. So what you going to do? Pointing out the mistakes of the other person, even if they really did make a mistake, even if everybody agrees that they made a mistake, even if they admit that they made a mistake, it does not absolve you of the responsibility of making it right. Period. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. Nobody out there needs more information. What you need these days is a strategy, frameworks, processes how to actually take all the information that's out there, all the knowledge and content that's out there, make sense of it, and actually produce a result, a tangible result. That's why I created the Game Group. It is my membership site where you will get tangible results for specific areas, business, personal development, basketball skill, and professional basketball. Choose your area of focus, and we have targeted, specified outcomes every single month along with live trainings, your ability to contact me, have your work critiqued by me, and a whole lot of other stuff. The link and all the information is down in the description at dreallday.com slash membership. Get in the game group if you're ready to get some results and not just a whole bunch of information. Let's do it. Work on your game.